Thanks everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins infrastructure meeting. It's the 25th of August. Let's take a look at the agenda. So um, propose a topic to talk schedules briefly. Then Tim talk to mirrors upgrade update center improvement. I'll give a brief status report on JIRA upgrade. We have a sort of a hot topic on Docker terms of service that needs further discussion. Status report on Oracle Cloud, release status reports, and I think that was it. Any other topics you want to add? Um, if there's time, perhaps um, the Docker images and their use of version-specific update sites. Good, Daniel. I missed that you're here. Okay, Docker, Docker. So, where? How about we put that before Oracle Cloud and after Docker Terms of Services? So, Docker image use of version-specific update sites. Yes. Um, if you access up, updates.jenkins.io, you get um, the plugins that are compatible with your versions of Jenkins. And the mechanisms the Docker images currently are using is one I would like to retire. Um, and it basically just needs a pull request merged, as far as I can tell. OK, got it, all right. So topic is added. We'll let you let you talk to it. That's great. Thank you. Any other topics we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's talk mirrors upgrade. Tim and Daniel. Yep. Um, so basically, we swapped um, the mirroring service from Mirrorbrain to Mirrorbits. Um, so the so the main reason that Olivia hadn't done this previously was um, he wasn't able to keep the um, plugin releases in sync um, because if you try and sync the whole folder it takes um, about twenty to thirty minutes. Um, but so Daniel built some functionality into Update Center um, which emits only plugins that have been up um, released in the last three hours. Um, so we're able to do a delta um, sync, which is normally between one and 10 plugins and it takes something like 10 seconds um, rather than 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and so with that, we were, we were able to change it over. Um, there are, there's been a few hiccups and there's, um, so we had issues with um, there was a HTTP HTTPS issue, which Daniel fixed in the HT access files, I think. Um, well, the biggest issue initially was that nothing was getting mirrored. Um, everything was going directly through to storage. So you see some <laughs> the bandwidth just went through the roof on Friday. Um, and we eventually tracked that down to there was a regex on what should get mirrored and HPI wasn't in there. Um, and that was in the chart and fixed that eventually. Um, and after we did that, then we noticed that mirroring was, was slow for the initial release and the archives download site is performance is just so bad. Um, so that archives was a fullback which had everything mirrored on it, um, but it's just performance on it's absolute rubbish. Um, so we've, um, and it was kind of okay because it was only used for old releases. So basically archives is used as a fullback when something's not mirrored. And um, I think we mirror something like the last year of releases. Um, so there are some, so, so some older Jenkins versions aren't mirrored. And I guess the conclusion was people who aren't updating often can deal with slow speeds. Um, the problem became though that um, when plugins are initially released, uh, mirror, mirror bits takes a while to kick in. And so they were getting really poor speeds. So um, I've ended up, at least for the short term, putting in a, um, changing the fallback service to be Azure, which has impacts on our bandwidth 
um, but it's only for, well, for plugins, it's only for the first just over an hour. So it takes, it takes between an hour to an hour and a half for mirror bits to notice that it's on the mirrors. Um, I'm going to try and look at improving that if I can. Um, but it also does mean that we are serving traffic for uh, the old Jenkins versions as well. So I think that's where most of the bandwidth is going at the moment. Um, it's, it's not huge. So I think we just need to monitor it. So we've made a couple of fixes. Um, we noticed that um, latest plugin. So there was a URL, something like slash download slash plugins slash plugin slash latest, um, which um, was getting redirected to get.jenkins.io directly and the symlink updates not getting updated. Um, and so Daniel fixed that in the update center to redirect to a specific version instead. Um, and it was, and then we noticed the next day that there was the same issue for wars. Um, and so Daniel fixed that as well. Thanks for your help in the update center here, Daniel. Um, and so that should stop all of that traffic. Um, so we're keeping an eye on some, I think yesterday afternoon-ish um, was the last fix. We, well, yesterday evening, um, European time, I think was the last fix that went in. Um, and I, I was having a look at the logs this morning um, and there were only two plugins showing up in the logs and they were both plugins who were released within the last hour. Um, and the rest of it was all Jenkins War um, files. So uh, now are the Jenkins War downloads ultimately served from mirrors as well or from? Uh, so Jenkins War is older than a year. Oh, oh. Okay, older than, so outdated Jenkins Wars. I see, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not necessarily older than a year, it's whatever. I think it's a year, but I'm not sure. Um, the other thing was, so just look, so it seems like Mirabits is a two stage um, on, on how it gets rolled out. So Mirabits does a refresh of the local repository. Um, and at that point it will hash the file if it, if it doesn't know about it. Um, and then it also periodically scans the mirrors doing a full R sync of against the whole mirror, um, which is when it notices whether mirrors have it or not. Um, so basically the, the issue is it seems that it only does full scans and it doesn't appear to be a way to do a partial scan. So it probably needs a improvement in mirror bits. Um, but then that could get our um, time to mirror to seconds instead of an hour and a half. Um, and um, also part of this, um, I think Gunther, I think his name is, um, he runs the EU mirror. Um, he's uh, increased his sync time from an hour to 15 minutes, I think. Um, so basically for his mirror, um, mirror plugins are mirrored pretty much straight away. Um, and we also, we're also pushing um, releases to the o, OSU mirror as well. Um, so, the, so, the, so plugins are available instantly on the OSU mirror uh, for Oregon State University. Um, but the issue is that Mirabits just doesn't notice and doesn't start redirecting there for a while. So I, ide ideally we wouldn't have to serve these plugins, but it's also, I mean, looking at today's traffic, it's not, it's not a huge amount of bandwidth, but if something like the AWS SDK gets released, that could be a fair bit of bandwidth. Right. Okay. So, and the the place where you're going to gather the traffic patterns from the logs is that something you can share with us? Is it available to somebody like me without? Yeah, so that's the VPN in, in Grafana. I think I shared the. Did I share the log queries? Uh, yeah. Um, so. Um, at eight o'clock a.m. my time zone. <laughs> um, if you say, if you look in IRC for you, you can check in Loki um, the URLs there. Um, the, the, you may be, need to be added to some group, so just have a look. Um, if you're not in the group, I can add you. Um, actually, that's one thing. Is um, did uh, you, Mark, or Ole get? access to um, uh, Keycloak. Uh, I know that was something we talked about before Olivia went on leave. I 
think so, but it's a good question. I don't have the answer immediately. Let me put it as a reminder. Mark, I would check because um, to key quote because with you going otherwise, yeah, otherwise out of next office. Week, yeah, next week there might not be anyone around who has access to accounts. Right. And if there's anything else that I, I know I'm in the backup on secrets um, for Olivia, um, but I think we're probably okay. Well, so I'm the global backup. There is other backups for some specific services, um, but I don't think that will be an issue for a week. Um, but if there's anything else that you do need while I'm off, have a think. <laughs> Great, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll try to do some safety checks, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you can log in, and if you need it, if you need any hints on how to do anything, I can show you. Great. Yes. Thank you very much. I was going to veto your vacation just so we were clear, Tim. But okay. <laughs> Enjoy your time off. That's great. Anything else on the mirrors? Um. So yeah, so there's two things. So this fixes two major issues with this that have been around for years. Um, it's been for 160 and Infra 361, I think. Um, so Infra 160 is that update site rep reports plugins being available before they're actually available and um, users can't download the plugin. And especially in the Jenkins UI, they can't even, they can't even install the previous plugin because you, there's no way to install a specific version. So you just get a 404 back. Um, and users that use latest or pull in a parent with a fixed version but not the child um, get stuck with the dependency for a um, So that fixes that issue. And I think it's 361, um, maybe may have the numbers wrong, but um, 361 is about plugin updates being done over HTTPS. Um, so now, now plugin updates are end to end over HTTPS. Excellent. Thank you. I cannot express the delight, how, how, how grateful that I am for that. That's wonderful. Thank you to you and Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Now you're no longer afraid of releasing Git plugin and annoying hundreds of people for the next hour and a half. <laughs> Which today I'm scheduled to release Git plugin and annoy people for a long time. You're right. The Google Summer of Code Git plugin delivery is coming, and so there's a potential we're going to annoy a bunch of people with some really cool stuff. <laughs> so yes, I was right. thinking this actually. Um, so one other fix that we get out of this is we get um, an updated Geo Geo IP database. So Mirrorbrain Geo IP database um, was broken; it hadn't been updated in a long time, and it was very inaccurate. Um, so poor users in the EU always got sent to the server ion. Um, mirror, at least my GOP data and many others, was going to the server ion mirror, which was falling over all the time. And that was what got me to fix it in the end. Um, so Gunther runs a really good mirror. Um, and, um, and so a lot of EU traffic is now going towards um, his mirror. Um, and, he and he posted a screenshot in IRC showing his traffic <laughs> climbing up a lot. And, and he's okay with that, I assume, right? He's not saying, oh, wow, I didn't expect to actually be a mirror at this level. No, he seemed happy with that. He's seeing, he was seeing a lot more traffic now. So all the poor users hitting server ion all the time are not, it's still, it's still a mirror, but it's, um, it's, it, it, not, it's not correctly now a mirror that's, that's, it's in the UAE. Is that right? So it's, it's a great mirror so, for yeah. Africa or for portions of India, but yeah. it's not such a great mirror for someone in Norway or particularly in the UK. I mean, you're geographically a long ways from the UAE, so. Yeah, and so I did some I did um, some timings just to show the improvement as well. So before we made any changes, I did a build with um, my work um, instance, which has 131 plugins, and it took just over two minutes to build. Um, I did it after our changes, um, and worked with running against um, the EU mirror and it was like 51 seconds to build. So it was over, over twice as fast. Excellent. Oh, that's great. 
That's wonderful. Which is probably about the mirror I was heading, but um. <laughs> that's 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 fine, right? You you saw real performance. That's great. And I think that's everything. Unless Daniel has anything to add. Nope. Okay, next topic then, update center improvements. Uh, Daniel, uh, do you want to lead off on this one? Sorry, yeah, I mean, they these two are linked. So we've already talked about the update center improvements. Uh, there was the selected list of plugins that were released in the last few hours that now makes the selective sync possible. And we changed a bunch of redirect rules and uh, URLs around. So now um, it advertises HTTPS URLs and no longer links or redirects to um, URLs that don't really work on mirrors because they are not getting synced. So this is really, really tied together. A quick note on the transition. Um, I saw some confusion, uh, I think from Jesse with a uh, test result from Friday evening. Uh, there was a window of about maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes where it looked like uh, downloads were failing due to check some errors. Um, that was part of the transition where we messed up and quickly fixed it. But uh, some tests were failing on Friday evening, um, UTC with um, check some mismatches. So that's perhaps useful to know for anyone who's seen those. Tests are also failing because um, they, because we changed from HTTP to HTTPS. So there was a testing core that tested that. Right. Right, and oh, that one, that right. one I'm delighted to have fail. That was a oh yes, that's exactly the right kind of failure. We're we're better now. We'll fix Wrong the test to be failed though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. Great. Anything else, Daniel? Oh, that it's, that's it. Okay. So that item on key cloak, I've got it as an action item. Let me just put it, I'll, I'll note it later as an action item. JIRA upgrade plan. I apologize. I've made no progress since our last meeting. The notes are in the plan and I will be working that. Uh, I've got to schedule the next session with the Linux Foundation to review that here are the actions I've taken. We're ready for the first test and they will then plan the work. They'll set up a, a JIRA instance uh, using data from our, our backup and we'll be able to test that. Some of the crucial things there are SSL related. How do we delegate to them the permission to create an SSL uh, name for something we can use for tests? Uh, okay. Daniel, oh no, next one, change in Docker terms of service. So Docker has restated that pull limits will be real, as far as I understand it. Is that everyone else's comprehension as well? That if you don't have, an, have a pro or a team account, you will be receiving pull limits. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's at the user end, it's not on our end. Oh, um, oh so this is per, this is the, the person doing the pull. It's not for the yeah. repository. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they, they put out we, a clarification like today or yesterday. We are users of Docker Hub. I mean, to build the images, we need to pull the upstream image. Uh, all of our Jenkins instances pull from our own uh, Jenkins images or potentially Jenkins infra organization. There's a lot more going on than just us publishing images and not caring who uses them. Sure, yeah. Okay, so so that probably lobbies that we need to, to look for funding to get a pro or a team account. It's just a pain. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not about the account, it's about having to put it everywhere. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. It's, it's, and then we have to, we have to use, we have to Docker login everywhere, right? We have to somehow inform them that yes, we're using it. Okay. 
how do we how do our um, agents work when we use um, Azure ACS? What's its name? ACI Azure Container Instances. Right. My my understanding is that so Azure is doing a poll. I don't know how they delegate or get it. So um, basically, the Microsoft account would be doing the polling in that case. Is my understanding. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, I get the impression that for our own polls, we could just not care and see how badly things break because nothing is really relying on that that much. Yeah, I think you get, well, the plugins like the Docker workflow plugin, a lot of its tests do polls. Um, some other plugins as well in their tests, they uh, create Docker images and, and pull images and things like that. So the other question is like, if uh, an image has, you know, a 10 steps in the Docker file, is that 10 pulls? Is that counted as 10 pulls when it pulls in that information or, or what is, how is the count being done? Do we know? I think um, from it's one pull. Yeah unless you have it cached even, right? So that's the thing. Uh, this is just a nightmare. <laughs> on the other hand, even, even, even this isn't catastrophic, right? I mean, if a few plugins CI just breaks, it's not like our site is going down as a result. Yeah, I think, I think it's gonna be hard to, understand all of the issues that we're going to run into before we actually run into them. <laughs> and they're just going to keep changing it. So they got people going to keep screaming at them and like. Okay. So I propose we leave the topic on the agenda and annoy each other every week with it so that we talk and, and share what we currently know. I don't see any immediate action that we should take right now. Anyone have specific actions I should be flat listing here? I think one thing we may want to check is with Azure and possibly uh, AWS. Uh, we, we don't have Docker on AWS right now, but it's something we've thought about with ECS. But maybe if, if they have any information on how it will affect their uh, different technologies, whether it be ACI or ECS, um, I don't know if we have any contacts within those organizations. Okay, there. Yeah, the, the, well, their recommendation is probably going to be to, to run a local container registry and import what you need. Yeah. So about that, we do have our defectory and it has Docker support. I've never used it, but that may be something where we could offload some stuff too. Do we have yeah, any, do we have any limits just, there? Oh, sorry, go ahead. So even if it's just for internal use, you can just sync, sync them, have, have a script. Yep, have a script that just has everything we care about and sync it, but it's a bit of a pain. And do we have any limits? I know we're on a like a sponsored account or something like that. Um, do we have any limit on the size that we can store there? I don't know. Uh, I we are beyond a terabyte of data so far, and we have not heard anything from JFrog that this would be a problem. Um, it might come up in the future, but I don't think there are real official limits. At least I haven't seen anything. The problem that we have is that our instance also predates any official um, open source sponsorship program they had. It was basically KK doing a deal with uh, uh, Yarov and or the, the, the founders of JFrog like eight years ago or something. Yeah, they struggle to find we exist. Okay, so is this one where we need to, we need to, well, so is there an action item there? We should talk to Artifactory, talk to JFrog? Uh, I, 
doubt they'd know we exist without a lot of pushing. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, that could definitely be an option would be using Artifactory at least for internal use. I don't think there's anything to do right now. I, I, don't, I also don't know if it needs talking about every week either. Oh, okay. Good. All right. So I, I'm just not yet comfortable that I see what's going to happen, but that's cool. We'll, we'll leave the topic, then should we go to the except, next one? Except when we need to. Okay. Docker image use of version specific update site. Daniel? Right. So um, a few weeks ago, well, months by now, um, I announced uh, plans and then implemented them to have finer grained uh, version tiers in update sites. So previously, um, if you had looked at updates Jenkins IO, there was one tier per LTS baseline for the last five baselines or so. And now um, what happens is the update center generator looks at the core baselines declared by all releases of all plugins and grabs those released in the last year and makes them into tiers. And uh, so I call them the dynamic tiers because their existence depends on the actually distributed plugins. Um, so right now, uh, in the Docker image, the old pattern with the naming scheme stable dash LTS baseline um, is hard coded. And uh, I request that this be changed so that um, the Docker image queries the basically the root URL for the update center JSON to get redirected to the appropriate compatible tier and then uh, continues from there rather than just assuming there will be this magic uh, directory name. And the way I propose we implement this in uh, the update center is that um, the existing tiers, fixed tiers, will still be generated, but any new ones would not. Um, so I propose to be started with Jenkins 2249.x, the upcoming baseline that's due to be uh, scheduled to be released in two weeks. Um, and at that time, there will be uh, not five, but just four fixed tiers. Um, and over time, uh, for each uh, future LTS baseline that exists, the oldest one will be removed until there are no fixed tiers left. Um, and that's, that's my proposal, how this can be implemented. There is a pull request that I linked uh, for the Docker image that I think accomplishes everything we need here. Um, but it is not yet merged. Um, and I think it's open for like the last three or four months. Um, so uh, I think now with the next LTS baseline upcoming is a good time um, to talk about how to proceed here. Okay. So any Downsides? I don't see any anything we're sacrificing by by switching this technique. Old containers will no longer be able to install plugins with the install plugin script. On the other hand, nobody supposed uh, well old containers that would be obsolete anyway through due to the. Um, the fixed tiers being dropped, right? So that's the with with the way I propose this works is, um, I think two point one ninety is the last the oldest supported fixed tier for the next three months, and that image will continue to work. 
Um, but 2176 will no longer work, but it would not work anyway. I don't think there are any downsides. Um, it might involve an additional redirect rather than guessing on the side of the Docker container, but it's basically free. That's fine to me. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. And then after the three month period, the 2.190 is working, it would fall off the edge and stop working. Is that correct? Right. Again? But that would happen anyway. So the way it used it currently works is we support the latest five LTS baseline. So right now that's 235, 222, 204, 190, 176. Once uh, 249 is supported, we drop 176. Once uh, 263 gets released or whatever, we drop support for 190 and so on. So it's always the latest five. And my proposal is we change the Docker containers to no, no longer use these and then stop creating the new fixed tiers and retire the old ones on the existing schedule. And a year from now, there will be none left. I don't see a downside, but I also don't see the pull request that um, Alex proposed merge. So uh, maybe I'm missing something. Okay, and that's this, this 964 pull request? Okay, great. Uh, that may just be that I need to be more diligent in doing code reviews. Any any other discussion there on Docker image use? Uh, Alex, any objection from you on the proposal? No, it sounds fine to me. Okay. And sounds great to me. Thank you. Okay, good. Anything else on specific update sites, Daniel? Nope, that was it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Oracle Cloud Conversation, nothing to report. Oof. Sorry, Oracle Cloud Conversation, nothing to report. I have the action item still to reach out to them, see if they're willing to provide infrastructure for us, and at what level I'll continue that. Release status reports. Uh, we released 2.254 today. Um, it went without any bump or bruise. Uh, 2.249.1 release candidate is coming, needs testing, and I've proposed an online meetup to highlight features. Tim, the idea was to do it like September 10 or 11 and include tables to divs as part of that. Would you be willing to be part of that, or is that... Um. I'm not really working on table steps right now. Um, okay. I would probably leave it out for now. You would. Okay. So then uh, that may justify that it's not, not a big enough session to do an online meetup then. Because if I remember right, the other UI improvements are not so dramatic as table to divs is. Yeah, it's probably not a huge amount in this one, I think. Okay. Mark, have you looked at what else changed? I mean, yeah. it doesn't be just UI improvements, right? There can be other stuff. I just don't know off the top of my head. And yeah. and I will I still need to do that. Windows support this, changes is yeah. substantial, but but that one needs more investigation before I propose a meetup with it. Yeah. There's theming possibly. As I was gonna say the theming stuff, that should be the first LTS with theming support, right? Yeah. Oh, oh right. Okay. So this this is the first LTS to support dark mode, for instance. And yeah. solarize. I don't recognize Solarize. What's that? And dark mode? North is on the call. Uh, Solarized is a fairly well-known theme for a ton of different text editors. Ah. Um, and I created the theme plugin for Jenkins. It's a bit weird because it only supports like four different colors plus highlight colors. And it's a bit difficult to make the Jenkin, to make the Jenkins uh, UI to restrict it that much, but I think it looks fairly okay. 
Okay, so those like might that. might justify being part of a, an online meetup then, because dark mode is certainly very, very much interest, interesting to people. So theming, okay, good, thanks. All right, so I'll refine that. Any other topics we need to address? If not, I'm gonna call us an end. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.